All right, uh, part two after the break. All right, where were we? Yes, uh, hash values. Okay, to generate only adds data. Okay, we need to access and get nearly all of them. Only add data to the Git database. It is hard to get the system to do anything. That is not undoable. I'll to make a raise data in any way. I don't get it. It is hard to get the system to do anything that is not undoable. Auto to make it erase data in any way. As with any VCS, you can lose or miss a change you haven't committed yet. But after you commit a snapshot into Git, it is very difficult to lose. Especially if you regularly push your database to another repository. This makes using Git a joy because we know we can experiment without the danger of severely messing things up. For a more in-depth look, look at Git stores as data and how we can recover data that seems lost. See undoing things. So if we do something, we can make a change. How do we really revert it? Let's see. At any stage, you may want to undo something. Here, we will review a few basic tools for undoing changes that you've made. Be careful because you can't always undo some of these undoes. This is one of the few areas in Git where you may lose some work if you do it wrong. Make the additional changes you forgot, stage them and commit again using the amend option. when you make a commit so for example for example we push something here to to we don't go to we simply write git Commit dash dash amend. This looks better. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This command takes your staging area and uses it for the commit. You end up with a single commit the second from the place the results of the first. Okay. I'm staging a staged file. So git add would add all the files to the staging area. So you reset to file. So 
So we do get reset head and file to on stage. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking notes in my work document. How can you unmodify it, revert it back to what it looked like when you last committed? Hit check out. And modify it. Check out file. Okay. The three states. Pay attention now. Here is the main thing to remember about Git if you want the rest of your learning process to go smoothly. Okay. Git has three main states that your files can reside in. Modified staged and committed. Modified means that you have changed the file but have not committed it to your database yet. Staged means that you have marked the modified file in its current version to go into your next commit snapshot. Committed means that the data is safely stored in your local database. This leads us to the three main sections of a Git project. The working tree the staging area and the git directory. So here we have all right so what I will do here is take a screenshot of that Because I want to keep it as a reference. I'm gonna grab a screenshot like so paste it.
let's take a look. So we have the working directory. Okay. Staging area. And we get directory repository. Check out the project stage fixes commit. Working tree staging area directory. The working tree is a single checkout of one version of the project. These files are pulled out of the conference database in the git directory and placed on disk for you to use or modify. The staging area is a file generally contained in your git directory that stores information about what will go into your next commit. Its technical name in git parlance is the index but the phrase staging area works just as well. The git directory is where git stores the metadata and object database for your project. This is the most important part of git and it is what is copied when you clone a repository from another computer. Okay. The basic git workflow goes something like this. You modify files in your working tree. Selectively stage just those changes you want to be part of your next commit, which adds only those changes to the staging area. You do a commit, which takes the files as they are in the staging area and stores that snapshot permanently to your git directory. If a particular version of a file is in the git directory, it's considered committed. It has been modified and was added to the staging area at this stage. If it has been modified and was added to the staging area, it is staged. And if it is, if it was changed since it was checked out, but has not been staged, it is modified. In Git Basics, you'll learn more about these states and how you can either take advantage of them or skip the staged part entirely. Okay. That was a big section. Next. Getting started. The command line. Now that's a big one. There are a lot of different ways to use Git. There are the original command line tools, and there are many graphical user interfaces of varying capabilities. For this book, we'll be using Git on the command line. For one, the command line is the only place you can run all Git commands. Most of the graphical user interfaces implement only a partial subset of Git functionality for simplicity. If you know how to run the command line version, you can probably also figure out how to run the graphical user interface version, while the opposite is not necessarily true. So learn the command line and you will conquer it all. That's what I'm saying basically. Also, while your choice of graphical client is a matter of personal taste, all users will have the command line tools installed and available. So we will expect you to know how to open terminal in macOS or command prompt or PowerShell in Windows. If you don't know what we're talking about here, you may need to stop and research that quickly so that you can follow the rest of the examples and descriptions in the book. Luckily for me, I am aware of what they are talking about as I have used those before. Uh, maybe even extensively at one point. But let's go back here. So we have read through chapters one and four. I made some notes. 
the information is not really uh, sticking because there's um, a huge wall of text, right? And I just find it hard to remember the right thing. Like, well, when will I need this? <laughs> like, I just need to know the behavior of Git and the commands to use, which I have already not done. Like the history of it and this other information. Uh, it's like nice to know, but I don't think it's essential. But what do I know? I'm not a web dev. Uh, anyway, assignment. Watch this video about how Git can improve the workload of both and enjoy and a team of developers. Very well, we shall watch this video. It's a YouTube one, so let me pause the music for now. Let's see if we can get any sound from here, actually. That was quite loud, I think, yeah. Let's turn it down a bit. who works with documents, or, as is most frequently the case in the realm that Git is talked about, a developer or someone who writes code. All of those roles have the common behavior in place that we create things, author new files, write the content, we save them, we then subsequently make some edits or changes to those files, corrections, additions, requested modifications, and then we save them again. This seems like a simple set of steps, but how would you graphically represent that? That saving the thing again and again is the goal and where version control helps, providing you clarity as to when you did it, why you did it, and what the contents of the change were. Open for review at any time in the future. If we drew a picture of the activities of you, working on one of those files that we just described, you might, for each of the points in time, describe what you did to the file, why you changed it, and then you'd like the tool itself to record what the contents of that change were. From one word to another, a spelling correction, the change of a color or a background, or adding a company logo to the top of a web page or even a Word document. For a single individual, this doesn't seem too hard, and for a single file, it seems relatively straightforward. Many individual products are putting this into the product themselves, this idea of keeping a history. What would this look like in terms of a graphical client that sits atop of Git? Here's GitHub for Mac, at which point I can look at any entry that I've done in the past, I can see the before and after of the change, and I can go into the details of that with the description in context and make sense of, why did I make this modification? For a single individual, I repeat, this is again rather straightforward and rather simple. But where Git really shines is when we start talking about this in a collaborative sense. You and other team members trying to do the same thing. Even worse, on the same files. When you do that, you need something much more capable than a simple revision history of a single file for a single person. You need the idea of keeping track of who changed it, when they changed it, why they changed it, but the capability of the tool to unify these back together in what is typically referred to as a merge. These actions, these interleavings of you and the team members working on the same, similar, or adjacent file is handled adeptly by a full-fledged version control system like that of Git. This idea of bringing these changes together is shown here in the same graphical user interface. Tim making modifications, 
in some cases, literally at the same time that I'm making them, but the tool handling it with precision and relative ease. Simply show who changed what when, and if there needs to be a unification of the two, bring up a concept that we call merge, and help me bring the two sets of changes, mine and Tim's, back into a unified and resolved good and final state. Let's recap what Git brings to the table and why it's a good implementation of a version control system. It's very lightweight. It's one of the newest implementations out there, even though it's had a full seven years to mature, and it's extremely fast, which is important to users because the tool just gets out of the way. It provides you that history, which we said some individual tools, document editing and so on, might provide on an individual basis, but Git can give you the history of all of the files that compose a project. Graphics, designs, documents, and in many cases, even some form of programming code. Next, Git facilitates this not for just one person making modifications to changes, but actually bringing them together, facilitating collaboration, people simultaneously changing the same or adjacent files and bringing them together for a unified effect making sense of this we're all working at the same time kind of idea. Lastly, Git is approachable for any type of knowledge worker. This is not a focus just on programmers, but equally serves designers and document authors. The graphical user interfaces provide a very pleasant experience with this version control system, a visual way of reviewing the history, and a simple double click and right click for navigation and changes to those versioned elements. I hope you give Git a try and appreciate that you've given me a few minutes to talk about what this might bring to your job as a knowledge worker. All right. So that was the video. And I totally switched off in the video. <laughs> yeah, I totally switched off. <laughs> I was, I, I just left. I was not paying attention. Yeah. See. Days in Linux, out in project, tons of people from out in project. Yeah, uh, everybody from the Odin project is here. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait, let me just uh, recap some info. GitHub for Mac, at which point I can look at any entry that I've done in the past. I can see the before and after of the change, and I can go into the details of that with the description in context and make sense of why did I make this modification. Yeah, so it's like uh, essentially what I have said before. It keeps track of things, like, you know, the things that we just read. It just keeps a track of everything, really. And it has files in multiple places as well, in case there's any failure, so you can continue working. And then once the server is back up, you can just uh, sync those files again. So GitHub is a website you can visit. If you haven't yet installed Git, visit the setting up Git lesson. I actually don't know if let me see if I need to do this for Linux. Yeah, because I, I don't I don't think I did that part actually. Where's the terminal? Here. Here's my terminal. So let's run some 
command line. First, uh, let's just run these commands. So, update the system. My system is up to date because I'm running the latest one. I know that for sure. And so we can skip 1.1. 1 .1. Now install git. Make sure you got the... Okay, sudo. Sudo is like a command that you use to run something with like the highest privileges dash a pt dash repository pp a git dash core slash pp a Okay. So I think it's doing it now. Fetch yeah, it's fetching stuff. And that's done. So now sudo apt update. Yeah, so the first command repository creates repository and adds git core. Git, I think. No. I am wrong. Uh, third line installs good, so I'm mistaken. Mm. Maybe the first line actually creates a repository by the looks of it. Update sudo apt install git. That will install git. Build continue. What? Yeah, that's fine. Is it done? I think so. Let's see. 2.37.3. At least 2.28 if I run this command. Well, we're fine because ours is older. Okay. So we now have that on our command line, which is good. Take a look at the other project's very own GitHub repository. This is where all the lessons are stored. While you're there, look at all our contributors to gain an appreciation for how Git records all collaborative efforts and how GitHub visually represents this. Let's take a look. Contributors. Let's take a look at commits. Do the commits, code frequency, forks. Just taking a look around. So I think these are. Are those all the people that worked on the Odin project? Or. Networks here. I think forking means grabbing the repository. Actually, yeah, so contributors are still a large list of contributors. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, let's move on. All right, now let's see if I can actually learn anything. What kind of a program is Git? Well, Git is a version control system program that helps with 
know, keep track of the changes. Helps with collaboration and all those things. What are the differences between Git and a text editor in terms of what they save and their record keeping? So a text editor just keeps a single file and all the changes. But um, Git um, keeps a history record of all the changes that you made and the files, so you can always revert back to them. And you can always uh, upload that and download from the server. So it's much more safer to use and less risk of losing your work. Does Git work at a local or remote level? It works at both because you can upload the files to the remote server, but you also have a Git running on your device. So if the server goes down, you still have the copy on your local device. Does GitHub work at a local or remote level? GitHub is a website. It's like a repository where it's like a container. So that would be remote. Why is Git useful for an individual developer? Good question. Again, probably is, you know, easier and safer to keep the files. Why are Git and GitHub useful for a team of developers or collaboration, right? It's easier to collaborate. You can see who made what changes, etc. Let's take a look, closer look at the individual person. Yeah, so creating, saving, editing, so yeah, that's that. What is the next lesson, I wonder? Git basics. The git commands, okay, that's going to be a big lecture. But I'll do that in the uh, next video. So thank you for watching.